U.S. President Donald Trump has often touted the tremendous economic potential of North Korea. One leading financial mind that has been saying that for a number of years now is legendary investor Jim Rogers of Rogers Holdings. He has previously said he would invest all of his money into North Korea if he could. So to see whether he still maintains that stance, especially after the breakdown of the U.S.-North Korea summit in Hanoi last week, we invited Jim to come talk to us, and I am delighted to say he is in the studio with us today. Thank you for coming on the show. It's an honor. My pleasure, Jung Ho. I'm delighted to be here. Mm. So let's start with the fact that, uh, as we mentioned, there was a very uh, interesting uh, North Korea-U.S. summit last week, which unfortunately failed. Many had been hoping for progress to be made towards the regime's uh, denuclearization and U.S.-North Korea ties, but of course, it didn't work out quite that way. Jim, as someone who has said they are hoping to invest in North Korea in the future, are you disappointed with the breakdown of the second Trump Kim summit? No, of course. It's a delay, and it's something that's inevitable. It's going to happen. It's just a delay. You know, life is full of delays and mistakes and problems. It's not the first time I've seen delays and problems. When you say it's going to happen, you mean uh, the unified Korea. Is that what you're talking about? Yes, yes. We're going to have an open and unified. The Koreans have been here for 5,000 years. You know, the Americans have been here for 70 years. Don't worry. It's going to happen. North Korea wants it. South Korea wants it. China wants it. Russia wants it. It's going to happen. Koreans want it. It's going to happen. Mm, but surely it must still be a bump in the road. I mean, uh, do you, why do you believe nothing has uh, really changed for you? Well, it's a bump in the road. It's a delay. It should be happening right now. It should be happening yesterday. It's not. And now we have to go through all sorts of delays and changes and discussions and talk and waste of time. But it's going to happen. Hmm. Where do you think it fell apart? I mean, you know, I, I mean, you say Trump has very, been very open. He's a businessman. You know, he sees the potential in North Korea as well. And you're a businessman. So you both seem to be on the same page. But why does it not seem to be happening right now. Well, I tried to figure out what happened, and the best I can determine, it was a bad interpreter or somebody didn't understand what was going on. I cannot figure out why the delay happened. The North Koreans say we did not ask for a complete withdrawal of, of sanctions. I wasn't there. I don't know who said what, but there was some kind of mistake somewhere because, as I said, nearly everybody, I mean, the Japanese don't want it, but they can't really stop it. They can try, but they can't stop it. And the American army doesn't want it. But other than the American army and the Japanese, everybody else seems to be for this. Mm. I don't know what happened. Mm. Let me dive a little bit into your uh, connection with Korea, perhaps. I mean, uh, so you've been talking about the potential of North Korea for a long while. When did that first start uh, appearing for you? When did you first start seeing that potential? Well, I guess I first realized starting around 2013 that when the Russians and the Chinese were pouring a lot of money into Razun, the northernmost port, I'm sure I say it wrong. How do you say it? Oh, Rajin, you mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Rajin port. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, and so I went to Rajin to see, and I could see that, yes, uh, gigantic changes were taking place in North Korea. And it was a little bit like when China started opening up. The changes were there. Most people didn't recognize them, but then they slowly began to sink in and take place. It's, Korea is going to be a very, very exciting country. You've been to, you just said, uh, Rajin, but you've also been, uh, you said altogether you've been twice to I've North Korea? I've been twice to North Korea, yes, yes, 2007 and 2013. Can you tell us a little bit about those trips? I mean, uh, well, the first time my wife and I went as tourists to see, to see you know, <laughs> North Korea vilified so much, I wanted to see if it was true or not. And we went to the games, the gymnastic games, which are the most extraordinary human event I've ever seen in my life. Uh, and then, we, then I went again in 2013 after the kid was there, and I could see the kid was making changes. When you, I, when you say the kid, you mean... Uh, Kim Jong-un, the North Korean Chair, leader. Chairman Kim. Yes, <laughs> yeah, Chairman Kim. I better call him Chairman Kim. Uh, when I could see that there were changes, and I wanted to see for myself if they were real, and they are real. Hmm. So when you saw, when you went there, when you saw, like, what kind of potentials did you see? Where did you see the kind of uh, investment potentials that you talk about so much? Well, enormous. You know, that port, is, for instance, is the northernmost ice-free port in Asia. There used to be a railroad up the east coast and the west coast of Korea. That's going to come again. You can put things on a boat in, in Busan, and they'll get to Berlin much, uh, on a train in, in, Berlin, in Busan. They get to Berlin much faster or Rome or wherever you want to send them. There's all sorts of potential. I mean, North Korea doesn't have anything. 
You know, as recently as 1970, North Korea was richer than South Korea, but communism ruins everything, and communism totally ruined North Korea. They don't have anything in North Korea. They don't have tables, electricity, soap. They don't have anything. So there are huge opportunities in a country which is opening up. In a previous interview that we saw as well, you talked about agriculture as well. You say there's a lot of potential there. I mean, what do you... Or what kind well, of there's potential in agriculture everywhere. Agriculture has been in decline for 35 years, so everywhere there's great opportunity. But especially, you know, in North Korea, when I was there, they were cutting, mowing the grass with, with scythes. You know what a scythe is? A handmade... Sure, sure, yes. ...knife, yeah. uh, yeah. essentially. Uh, t- go there and make lawnmowers, and you'll make a huge <laughs> amount of money. They, mm. it, it's, it's been ruined. They don't have fertilizer. They don't have seeds. They don't have tractors. They don't have anything. So just about anything you want to do in North Korea is a great opportunity, especially agriculture, because agriculture worldwide has been declining for 35 years. There are many places that you could invest your money in uh, around the world, and I'm mm-hmm. sure you, you do put you know uh, your money in, in various places, but you do talk about the potential of North Korea. Why is North Korea different? Why? Because it's a disaster. <laughs> I hope your mother and father taught you to buy low and sell high. Well, North Korea is low. Mm. It is one of the cheapest countries in the world, but it's got enormous potential. Enorm- it's right on the Chinese border. Lots of disciplined, cheap, educated labor. Lots of raw materials, lots of natural resources. You put it together with South Korean brains and management ability and South Korean, uh, South Korean capital. A huge synergies that take place, and plus North Korea has a lot of women. You need women in South Korea. You don't have enough women. You're not going to marry Vietnamese women much longer. You're going to be marrying North Korean women before too much longer. So they're huge, huge opportunities and synergies once you open up again. So you definitely agree with Trump, who says you know there's tremendous opportunities, and uh, Kim just has to take the step. Well, America has to take the step, too. I mean, it's not just Kim. Please, I know you listen to American propaganda and South Korean propaganda, but, you know, you've got nukes, too, uh, and you won't get rid of your nukes, and the North Koreans want you to get rid of your nukes, and you won't get... I want everybody to get rid of the nukes. It's insane. Uh, So for Kim Jong-un as well, you know, the kid, he sees... He must be able to see the potential as well uh, for uh, economic growth, for the potential. What do you think is stopping him, holding him back as well? He's, he's the one trying to do this. You know, he's the one who started this whole thing. He's got 15 free trade zones. You know, he's got uh, bicycle races, international sports competitions now, movie competitions. He's the, he's tr- the kid is not Korean. The kid was educated in Switzerland. Would you want to live in Switzerland or North Korea? <laughs> well, Chairman Kim knows the difference. Mm. You know, he has been around, and would you want to live in even Seoul or North Korea? Everybody wants to live in a different way. The North Koreans know it now. You can't lie. This is not 1989. Mm. You cannot lie to these people anymore. So they all want to change, including Chairman Kim. Obviously, we're very looking at this. They're very. Uh, um, from an economic uh, investor perspective mind of, you know, we want to see uh, there's potential there. It's a shame that it's not being uh, uh, taken, you know, the, it's not fulfilling its potential. But obviously there's a lot of political and uh, geopolitical and complex issues that prevent uh, these things from happening. But you say you still believe in 20 years, to, within the next 20 years, it's going to unify. I mean... It's going to you... unify long before 20 years, no. And... The Korean Peninsula is going to be the most exciting place in the world in the next 10 or 20 years because North Korea is the disaster. I told you about the synergies that are going to take place, and it will be very, very exciting. Jung Ho, you are lucky to be Korean. (laughs) You're at the right place at the right time. But if anything, I just want to go back to that summit uh, last week. Uh, Kim Jong-un and Trump met you know, for mm-hmm. the second time face-to-face, right. but they both weren't able to come out with a deal at the end of it. Right. Doesn't that show still how far the differences are apart? And where does your confidence lie in the fact that it will be resolved and it can happen uh, soon? Some, if there's something that has to happen, it's going to happen. This situation on the Korean Peninsula, which has been here for, what, 70 years or so, Cannot, if something cannot be, 
It cannot be, and it's going to change, and everybody knows it now. I tell you, the Japanese are against it, the American army is against it, but other than that, everybody is for it. It could happen this afternoon. If somebody with, uh, you know, common sense sat down, it would happen this afternoon. Why is there still a barbed border 70 years later, 60, 60 years later? I have no explanation. And it doesn't make sense, and it's going to change. Something that doesn't make sense is going to change, especially when nearly everybody's for it. Mm. So you, you're disappointed in perhaps uh, what happened last week, you're, the delay, but uh, you still believe that's, like, that's your message. I don't believe I know. <laughs> Come on. Believe. What is there to believe? What does mm. belief have to do with this? It is a historic fact that is going to change. Look at history. This peninsula has been run by Koreans, for many, many thousands of years, and it's going to be again. So why does Washington, D.C. tell you what to do? <laughs> I mean, you know how far away Washington is? You should get out a map. Why is Washington, D.C. telling you what to do? Well, I mean, obviously, there's, as, as we said, there's a lot of complex uh, um, ties there no, as well. No, not complex. Very simple. Why is Washington, D.C. telling you what to do? That's I mean, not complex. That's simple. I mean, we could. Uh, I mean, you know, we could say the there's there's you know uh, at the moment South Korea uh, economy relies on uh, uh, the U.S. a lot as well. There's a lot. China is uh, much more important to South Korea now than the U.S. Hmm. I mean, look at the facts. China is much more important, and China's right there. China has much more interest in this, and than uh, Washington D.C. We'll go into uh, South Korea's economy and uh, and your hopes for it as well in just a bit. But uh, let me just ask you a bit. There were obviously uh, we many reports last month that say you were invited to North Korea at the invitation of Kim Jong Un himself. You have since category categorically denied these claims. Uh, but where do you think Jong Hong? You've came heard from? of you've heard of fake news. <laughs> I will tell you, I was sitting, I was more shocked than anybody. <laughs> the front page of a South Korean newspaper had a picture of. Chairman Kim and me, saying that he had invited me to North Korea. I'm sitting this, and the source of this was the Blue House. Hmm. That's what it said. You would think the guy would have called me before hmm. he published something. Nobody called me. The South Korean ambassador called me and said, let's talk. What's up? I said, you tell me what's up. I don't know anything about this. You're the, you're the South Korean government. Hmm. The South Korean ambassador didn't know. I didn't know. None of us knew. And the reporter still hasn't called me, the hmm. person who wrote that story. Told you've heard of fake news, boy. I've I've experienced it. <laughs> so we can categorically deny there's been no invitation as such. There's but, uh, been absolutely nothing other than somebody in South Korea wrote a story. Do you think Kim Jong Un knows who you are? Do you think he's aware? I'm told he does. You're told he does. Yes. Okay. Uh, what kind of source tells you that he does? The Korean ambassador. <laughs> ah, interesting. The North Korean ambassador and the South Korean ambassador. Ah, okay, that's interesting. So you would accept an invitation if it came? Oh, sure, I've been there twice. Mm. Of course, it's illegal to go now. It's illegal for Americans to go there now, but I, my daughter's very keen to go. I'm very keen to go. No, we want to go. So the uh, so let's go back to like investment investing in north korea i mean as i said there's it's not an i don't think it's a simple issue especially as i said with uh political concerns and as, as well with such things as uh complicated things such as how can we say uh the humanitarian issues the human the human rights issues and that kind of thing and all those kind of problems that uh, uh prevent it from integrating into the international community i mean would those have to be resolved Ho, at all? I, I'm not here to defend anybody in North Korea, especially not the father hmm. or the grandfather. They were obviously very bad guys. But this guy is trying to change things and open up. I, you know, I don't invest in, I mean, I don't think about Adolf Hitler when I think about investing in Germany. <laughs> I don't think about Joseph Stalin when I invest in, in Ch Russia. This is 2019. Hmm. This is not 1989. This is not 1959. The world is changing, and if you had thought about Mao Zedong, you never would have invested in China. If you thought about Joseph Stalin, you never would have invested in, in Russia. This is a new person, a new era, and things are changing. Mm. Uh, obviously, you'd want to get in there as soon as something happens, uh, but the, um, the people like, uh, um, let's say, for example, like China would want, also want to get involved as well. You think there'd be a big They're fight? They're already there. Mm. 
Suppose I told you there was a country where you didn't have to compete with Japan, you didn't have to compete with South Korea, and you didn't have to be, compete with America. You would say, oh my gosh, I want to get there fast. Don't have to compete with Japan, South Korea, or America? You would rush. Well, the Chinese are doing it. The Russians are doing it. <coughs> I'm a citizen of the land of the free. We're not very free in the land of the free. I cannot do anything there. All these other people can, and they are. You can't do anything there. Uh, but if you could, you should be there. Uh, let's move on to also now to South Korea as well. So you're in South Korea. Um, you've got uh, some uh, business to do here, I'm sure. I mean, when you see South Korean economy, and uh, uh, what are you looking at here? What, what do you what what do you see? What potentials do you see in South Korea as well? Well, once all of this opens up, I will repeat: Korea, this Korean Peninsula, is going to be the single most exciting country in the world. I'm here now because I'm a director of a company called Anante, and I am here for the board meeting, mm. which is it happens every four times a year, and mm. it should. Uh, but there, and Anante will have huge opportunities once this op- opens up around the around the, the peninsula. So there, and I'm look always looking for opportunities, investment opportunities. I don't know. Uh, I've invested in Korea Airlines just because it's here, mm-hmm. and when this all changes, they're obviously going to have a lot more passengers. But I still am looking for good opportunities for investing in the Korean Peninsula. I understand uh, there are f- various industries such as the nano uh, materials industry, a few startups you've seen in Korea. Uh, can you tell us about those kind of potential that you've seen? Well. <laughs> I, I have very small investments in a fintech company mm. uh, here because I'm a smart guy. I have a very <laughs> small investment in a cosmetics company here because I'm a very smart guy. I have a very small investments in, I mean, these investments are so small, they're not, uh, I shouldn't be discussing them, but also in graphene. Mm. You know, graphene is going to be an extremely exciting industry in the future. But these are all tiny investments. So any investment you make in Korea, you are doing it on the assumption that uh, the careers uh, will open up and there'll be potential for North Korea as well? No, no. Graphene is because graphene is going to be huge whether North Korea falls into the sea. Mm. doesn't matter. Graphene is going to be a huge industry worldwide. Uh, fintech is going to be – I invest there because of the people, because of the guy. Uh, it doesn't matter whether he's Australian or Korean or whatever he is. And likewise with the uh, cosmetics company. They could be French. They could be anything. They happen to be South Korean. No, these are because, especially the last two, are because of the people more than the industry. But you are planning to make kind of investments in South Korea, looking ahead, let's say, as you said. If I can find them. If you know some good investments, please don't announce it on the radio. (laughs) Please keep it a secret. (laughs) Tell me, and then we'll announce it on the radio. Well, you know, I'll see as well. I think I need to make my investments as well. I agree. You make them, and then you tell me, and then we'll announce it on the radio. We'll do it together. Yes, yes, yes. (laughs) But then, okay, so uh, finally, just a a timeline of, of like, what, you know, you say you have said 20 years, but you say it's going to happen soon. No, no, forget 20 years. What I said was it's going to happen fairly soon. You know, in February of 1889, there was an interview on German TV with Willy Brandt, one of the most esteemed German politicians of the last century. And they said to him, will there ever be unification? And Willy Brandt said, not in my lifetime. February 1989. Do you know what happened in November 1989? He was the most esteemed German politician of his day. He said, it won't happen in my lifetime. It happened nine months later. Mm. So it's going to happen. I don't know when, but it's, it's in process. It's already happening. As you know, Mr. Moon and Mr. Kim went up and took down some of the barriers at the 38th parallel. It's happening. On that note, I think that's where it would be a good place to finish our show on a very hopeful note. So we'll see how things do turn out. Uh, but uh, I've been talking to the legendary investment guru, Jim Rogers of Rogers Holdings. Thank you again for taking the time to come in, and we really appreciate it and uh, hope you can talk to us again soon. Zhang Ho, it's my pleasure. I'm delighted.